welcome on this channel. Today's video is very special, as I want to show you a super rare item, especially in this condition, the Sony KVX370, a 3.7 inch color portable television, also known as the Sony Watch Cube. But what's so special about this TV? Well, it is an index run. It uses an innovative concept called beam index technology. The technology was introduced by Philco in the late 50s and got popular with the Apple Tube, where later Trinitron TVs are using three electron guns, one per color channel, and an aperture grille, the Indextron is built more like a black and white tube, using a single electron gun and a rather complex timing decoder circuit to control each color intensity as the raster is sweeping across the successive phosphor stripes. This model has been sold in the past for over $1,000 and I've seen offers up to $2,000, the legend says there are only a few units out there, and even fewer are still in working condition. I've read that the reason for its scarcity has to do with the massive recall Sony made for this model, and most were destroyed. Opening the box reveals the mandatory manual and warranty card, probably too late to send back, and under the foam board is the original 12 volt 1.3 amps power supply with the infamous Sony trademark barrel reversed polarity with center negative. Next to it is the very compact and adorable watch cube, breathing for the first time since it was packaged in 1989. The set proudly displays the Indextron logo. The TV also serves as an alarm clock and the top controls can be used to set the clock and alarm. We can also find the regular power, channel select and volume buttons. Under the cover are more controls for channel adjustment and fine tuning. The extra long antenna helped to get better, now defunct analog aerial signal. On the right side are only vent and speaker holes. The back has the switch to select between RF and composite. The standard green headset jack is on the left side. Finally, the underside reveals a foldable tilt stand as well as picture control knobs. But you know what they say, don't turn it on, take it apart! Three screws and two plastic tabs are holding the plastic case. The internals are packed with modules. The first one to remove is the input board. We can then carefully remove the tube neck board, quite simple as there is only a single electron gun. We need to remove another pair of screws to take the top panel out. The next piece here, by the orange light pipe, is the sensor helping with the color timing, but we'll get into that later. Once all boards and the anode cap removed, we're left with the main piece. The boards are assembled in a very compact fashion, but still serviceable as each side can fold. Every RF sensitive part is protected by a metal shield can. This section here appears to be the battery backed up clock and OSD circuitry. The bottom board can be accessed after removing the image control's plastic cover. That Sanio IC is the main jungle and is the core of the video signal processing. This set suffered from a major leaky capacitor problem. It appears that they used high quality Elna branded capacitors for the critical areas, but those came from a defective batch and sealed the fate of the watch cube. Most surviving sets have copper traces completely eaten by electrolytic acid, and this TV needs a complete recap. So I'll proceed with the replacement of all the Elna caps, starting with this one. I quickly realized that even if no other visual damages can be seen, all the Elna caps were indeed leaking, and I spent the whole day recapping the set. While the TV is apart, I wanted to take the opportunity to give you a closer inspection of the beautiful Indextron tube. As you can see, the AquaDAG is only applied partially to leave a window for the external sensors to detect the raster's position. That's the part of the tube covered by the orange light pipe material. Now everything has been serviced, let's put it back together and turn it on.
you can see, the sharpness is quite good, but resolution is low with 150 TV lines and 148 triplets of colored phosphor stripes. The contrast ratio is also quite poor and around 50 to 1, as the sensor required some light to detect the beam, so blacks are always grayish. The display quality reminds me a lot of the old handheld consoles such as the Game Gear or Atari Lynx LCD displays. The clock can be displayed by pressing the large top button. When the TV is off, pressing it will turn the set on just long enough to display the time and a cute animation. The tuner adjustment is done through the OSD. One thing I noticed is how hot the unit is running, with temperatures by the vents reaching 60 degrees Celsius or 140 Imperial Fahrenheit for you American friends. And if you are wondering, looking at the service manual, it seems that an RGB mod could be possible, but this TV is such a collector item that I don't want to attempt butchering it by drilling the case to add connectors. That's it for today. I am really excited to have found this amazing novelty and collector item. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. And as always, thanks for watching.